Nick Smith. Oh, man, they're getting, besides being an elite um, athlete, uh, an elite guy, we kind of, uh, skill-wise, and, but you're getting the most competitive uh, guy that, uh, that plays with the unreal motor, uh, that's so passionate. Um, like I said, I've been blessed. I've had some of the some unreal players come through. And, and uh, my one year with Nick Smith, he, he separates himself from those players with his um, – with just how locked in and passionate and competitive he is. He, he, he's different. He's different than any player I've ever coached. And, Coach, you, like you said, you've had some talented players. Let me name off a few of them. Kayvon Allen, Moses Moody, Anton Beard. I mean, you've had some dudes that have come through your program, and yet you just said that this young man that's arriving on campus coming up in May – has separated himself. And one of the things, Tommy's gotten a chance to ref him. I've gotten a chance to watch you guys play. Nick's ability on both ends of the floor stands out to me. Sometimes you have a highly recruited player that doesn't play a lick of defense, but Nick was never that way. Did you notice that specifically, that he was just always locked in on both ends of the floor? I mean, I knew he, I mean his goal, and everything he wanted to do was win a state championship. But his, you know, he gets all the accolades and, and, uh, and 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 all those things that he wanted, he didn't want to be the most highly recruited kid or one of the most high profile kids ever come out of the state of Arkansas. But he did win a state championship, and uh, so he was driven all year long. And uh, like I said, he brought it on both ends of the floor. Uh, thing about Nick is something I know Coach Bus is going to love. He could guard multiple positions, and at the high school level, level he could guard all five, and he could guard all five very well from the point guard to the postman and uh he won't be able to do that in college but in high school he could do all five of them coach first of all uh, this is tommy congratulations on a great career and uh congratulations on a state another state championship this year at uh, north little rock you, you mentioned the state championship for for nick and the importance of that you, you think about malik monk you think about corliss williamson and some of the great players of all time in our state that didn't get state championships was that the motivating factor for the move to north little rock and how did that motivate him and this team as as the season progressed you know, he, I mean, uh, I didn't really ask him why he moved. I was just super glad that he did. Uh, <laughs> you found a spot for he, him. <laughs> um, exactly, yeah. Uh, I didn't have a special tryout just to make sure he was going to be okay. okay yeah. <laughs> but he, um, but he, you know, I, you know, he brought that every single day. He, he talked about that all the time. I, he wanted the ring. He wanted the ring. He, he, he would say it, it wasn't every day. It was every other day. And, uh it took a it took a little while for adjustment. You know, he was the coming from where he came from. He was the guy, and not saying he wasn't the guy with us, but he had he had some other talent around him, and uh, and it took a while to for him to figure out that uh, it can be a lot easier on him once he gets other people involved. And he started and he trusted his teammates. And his teammates trusted him, and uh, it was probably after our. First time through conference when we had with uh, we faced Central at home and it was a really tough game, an overtime game. Nick hit a shot to send it into overtime, then he hit a shot to win it. Uh, we had a tough game over at Bryant, and we really just didn't play well together. But really, from that point on, we really didn't have a game inside twenty points. I mean, the championship, <clears throat> championship game was eighteen, uh, um, but it was over twenty at one time down the last two or three minutes. But, uh, man, he really figured that out. His teammates figured it out. And, uh, and uh, man, it was just a, it was a beauty to watch. And I'm sure glad that I had that first seat on the bench to be able to watch be a part of it. Coach, about a week ago, you announced your retirement after 10 seasons, six state titles. Uh, why that decision now when, when everything in North Little Rock seems to be uh, on the path of, of elite success? Well, I mean, it, it's something that's, you know, I, I've thought about it for a while. Me and my wife talk about it. We prayed about it. Uh, I think the, uh, I mean, I say timing of the type of season that we had, that, uh, man, you know, we it finished ranked anywhere from fifth in the country as one poll to, you know, the 12th, 16th, then another poll, other polls, and, and traveled all over the country from, you know, uh, Tennessee to Florida to, uh, to Texas, we, we we got to play in some big events, the biggest ones in the country, and and uh, we thought, man, it wasn't 
through the time to go out. It wouldn't be any better to do that. You know, the Lord's opened up some doors for for me. I'm gonna, uh, I've got some things that I'm going to do, and and I'm going to work with a um, with a, a former Razorback, Philip McKellar. He was a teammate and one of my best friends in high school. We played for the Razorbacks for a couple of years. He's been Nolan Richardson's early class. Then he finished up at Arkansas State. He has a, uh, a, a company that really does financial planning stuff with uh, with, with, with teachers, with uh, with pastors, with, uh, with just any any individual. And uh, so I've got to do some a little schooling and do all that. But I very think it's a door that the Lord opened up for us, and my family, and and uh, if things don't work out. You know, a year down the road, you know, I'll I'll jump back in. I hope I can find a job somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's there's still some tread left on those tires. So, you, you mentioned this team and all of the accolades, not just the state championship, but the, the events you played in, and the in the rankings nationally, uh, top five in in some polls' opinions. You've seen some of the great teams in Arkansas over the last 30 or, or 40 years. Um, where does your team this year rank against And We were ta- having this conversation earlier in the show, that 92 Parkview team. There's been some, some other ones come along. But uh, where does your team with two McDonald's All-Americans and all of the accomplished, in your mind, rank uh, amongst some of the best teams ever in Arkansas? I, mean, that's, you know, I have a lot of people ask me, you know, which of my six – state championship teams were, you know, who's the best? And, you know, I'm very partial of the 2013 team. Uh, that was a very strong team with Kayvon Allen, Deshaun Watkins, who played at Florida State a little bit, and, and uh, at ULR, and uh, at Kayvon Allen, obviously. And Thomas Alexander, kids, over, he's overseas playing still right now. Um, that team was very good. Um, there's something about every team that I coached that is uh, was special is from – you know, how tough they were to uh, a team of winning back-to-back or a three-peat team or something special about them. The 2018 team, but, but Moses Moody only had him as a sophomore. And uh, so we know how great he is is now, how that team really, really peaked at the perfect time of the year. My 2021 team, special to me through the fact that it, uh, I never had a group that at the, at the end of the year uh, – you know, really, really accepted their roles and just had the ultimate goal of winning a winning a state championship. And, and but this year's team was by far it had to be the most. You can't say it wasn't the most talented when you got two McDonald's All Americans on it. But, uh, had some bumps in the road early in the year. Like I said earlier, it takes it takes a little bit for them to get uh, adjusted to each other and uh, and stuff like that. But the, man, you know, we didn't lose a game from uh, mid December on and. Uh, Probably ninety percent of those games were uh, mercy rules, and and the, so the, this year's team was probably the most dominant team that I've had. If you want to compare them to the you know ninety two Parkview team, I remember I watched them. You know, I was a young guy, and just uh, I was in college, just finishing yeah. college. Uh, but man, they you know I know they were special. You know the West Memphis Keith Lee Michael Cage team were mm-hmm. were uh, people talk about all the time and. Uh, so you know, it's kind of different eras, different times, different styles that uh, were that were played were allowed to be played by, uh, you know, by officiating or stuff like that. Things are things are a little different, and uh, so it's hard for me to compare. But I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to be very, very uh, favorable to my guys. And, but it, it's been cool to be able to lock up with, with some of those teams to see see what happens. Coach Johnny Rice, North Little Rock, high school basketball coach with us here on the Morning Rush, recently retired about a week or so ago. Coach, I wonder, since you have a unique perspective coaching Moses, y'all winning when he was a sophomore and then him transferring to Montverde and doing what they did there with one of the best high school teams ever assembled him, Cade, Scotty Barnes, and then your one year with Nick, we're seeing a transition of movement from guys going to prep schools and you've coached in Arkansas high school basketball which we know is very talented just kind of your thoughts on the level of play at the just normal high school level relative to prep schools like with Nick playing high school basketball that compared to Jordan playing at link prep just kind of the differences you th- see in the in the pros and cons to both sides you know this year we like I said, we travel. We played in the City of Palms Classic in Fort Myers, Florida, and uh, they had a mix of the who they thought were the best 
public high schools and the big prep schools like Mount Bird, IMT, um, Oak Hill. They were all they were all there, and you know, we we got to, we played IMT and uh, and got hooked up with them, and we played the uh, Dr. Phillips, which was one of the top high schools and public schools, and uh, you know there's not a lot of difference. You have to deal with a with a regular public high school. You're not going to have that every year. And uh, to where in a prep school they're going to load up and to deal with the with the prep school and and I, I mean Moses I was so blessed to have him a, uh, one year and uh, he was only a sophomore but he was a different guy he was he had the pro uh, approach the pro mentality as a as a sophomore and it was a business to him to where I mean he worked on it he wanted to be coached he's probably one of the most coachable kids if not the most coachable kid. He would tell him, say, Mo, hey, Mo, we need to work on this. We need to work on that. Uh, that guy was, was – he would come before school and work on it. He would stay after school and work on it. Work on whatever you said. He, he uh, really accepted coaching. And uh, I knew special things were for him. And, uh, you know, I give it to I didn't want to lose Moses, but his dad, we met three or four times the summer before he left. His dad kept me uh, uh, up on what was going on with him. You know what kind of decisions they were going to have to make, and then actually the ultimate decision that they went to Mount Verd and and uh, there were the prep schools. There's, there's a handful of them. We got Mount Verd, IMG, Oak Hill, uh, now Sunrise, uh, Link, Link Academy, and Branson is jumped up there with them too. There's a handful of them, but there's a whole bunch of preps. <clears throat> but those five top five, four, five, or six are completely different than than everyone else. When you think of a prep kid. Or I used to think of someone that needed to go to prep school was someone that the grades were in a bad spot, or they had, uh, uh, you know, not the best home life, or where they lived, and and or they they needed to get notoriety and get on the map. There was your reason to go to prep. Well, you know, now, you know, you, you can get notoriety with social media today. Anybody and everybody's out there, so you can get seen and and do all that, but. Uh, you know those 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 preps. So they're you can't say they're basketball factories because I know at Mount Verde for, for for sure. You know they they went to class and they did they did what they supposed to and that was that uh, academically. And uh, I was very impressed with all that. And the Moody's were not going to be anything that go anywhere that uh, Moses was going to get pushed in the classroom just like he was in the basketball court. But uh, you know those 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 five or six are completely different. And they're just a handful that are different than all the rest. And uh, so a kid going to those prep schools, I kind of look at different than somebody going to some other prep that you've never heard of. There's, there's preps everywhere. And uh, but uh, so that, that's kind of the trend. But you know, I you know, I think some of those guys are missing. They won't play. I know when Moses went to Mount Bird, he didn't play in front of a, a crowd like a North Little Rock Central game. Or a North Little Rock Jonesboro game back in the, the days that could happen again, you know, next year with us being the same conference. Um, they don't play in, in them atmospheres and those um, where the student body is involved and doing all that. So I, I think there is a thing that they miss going to prep. There's a lot of advantages of prep. But I think there's a lot of advantages of, uh, of of staying at your home school and doing that. What's Nick one to do? You know, Nick Nick fought with a fought with the eligibility issue and and. I could not believe that he stayed around and fought, and I'm so glad he did. And uh, and uh, but he he you know, he didn't do anything wrong to begin with, and then but he he wanted that experience, a plan to his local high school where he lived, where his family could come to every game, and he wanted that. And uh, that that there's something special about that. So there's pros and cons of both prep and high school, and uh, it just comes out what the kid wants and what's best for their family. But I'm going to push. The regular high school, uh, you know, every time if, if it's me. Coach, we'll close on this. Nick is going to arrive on campus and it's going to be an instant celebrity. He's the most highly decorated player coming out of high school since Corliss Williamson. Social media, I'd argue, as you just said, has even amped up his status even more. What about you or what about him leads you to believe that he can handle that pressure associated with him next year? That guy, you can say he loves the camera because I'm not going to say he's, you know, I, I, that gets old, but I mean, he, he's played at the most elite level that 
any high school kid could play in. And he's had camera. He had a camera in his face every day at practice, every day somewhere, every game we went to, every trip that we traveled on. He had a camera that was right there. And uh, and I don't say he thrives on it, but, I mean, it, it keeps him amped up. And, uh, you know, I talked about all year with the expectations we had at North Rock this year. You know, I put a lot of pressure on myself because I'm co- I coached at my hometown. It's my dream job, and I wanted to be as successful as, as I could because it was where I came from, and it's where I'm. You know, I've, you know, I bleed blue and gold, and I put a lot of per- personal pressure on myself. But uh, so I felt that, and I would talk to the kids about it. guys. We got pressure on. This is we're, we're supposed to win every game. If we don't win it by 20 or 30, they're going to ask what happened. And every time, Nick would go, Coach, we ain't got, we ain't got no pressure. We're going to do what we do. And, and, he, and I believe that. I saw that, that he didn't ever play that way. And uh, so I would see the pressure. He, he, let me say he's built for it. I can say he's prepared himself and uh, to, to be able to handle you know, those cameras and the interviews and the, all the expectations and and uh, he's a perfectionist. He wants to. He don't. If he don't play up to his uh, standards, he he gets upset with himself. And uh, he'll get better at that. But he'll he'll ha- he'll have some bumps and bruises once he gets to college uh, adjusting. But uh, he'll adjust really quick. And and I know his future is unreal. Yeah. And uh, I'm so proud of him for it for sure. Coach, congratulations on a great career and a great season. And uh, we'll hope to uh, catch up with you again down the road. Yes, please do. Thank you all very much. All right, Johnny Rice, head coach at North Little Rock, recently announced his retirement and coached uh, North Little Rock to a state championship and talking to him this morning about Nick Smith, who's uh, headed to Arkansas, as we all know, to be a, a Razorback Online this fall. is your number one source for all your betting needs, sports info, and odds. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's odds for the Masters Championship and the start of Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so join today. Learn why everyone is saying bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on popular sports and games bet online where the game starts